Are you looking for a unique and fast but compact e-bike? The Fucare Scorpio might be the bike that you're looking for. Now, the one thing that I noticed real quick about the Fucare bikes that made them stand out more than any other bike that I've ever seen is this frame design. Check out this crazy looking frame design that actually serves a pretty good purpose. It not only makes it structurally stronger, it also protects your 20 amp battery that you have stored on your frame. Now the model of the Scorpio that I got is this awesome pearly white color. And it comes with these really cool holographic looking logos on here that really pop out when the sun hits them. All right guys, let's not waste any more time. Let's take this out for a pedal assist test. Now throughout this review, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between all the details on the bike and also the test ride. So let's go ahead, let's not waste any more time and let's get going. All right, so pedal assist one looks like it gets you up to around eight to nine miles an hour. Pedal assist two, getting me up to about 13 miles an hour. Pedal assist three really has some power. We're getting up to 18 miles an hour. Pedal assist four, we're up to 22 miles an hour. All right, let's get pedal assist five going here. Had to get out of traffic and I am ghost pedaling, but I am hitting 20, 30 miles an hour. This thing is quick in pedal assist five. Now with the frame design that they went with, it's not a super long wheelbase and the stack height isn't super high. Having a little bit lower stack height allowed them to put on these BMX style handlebars. And I actually really like these. They allow you to get a lot of forward adjustment and back adjustment. And to me personally, these things are super comfortable whenever you're going down the road. Now this does come with a 20 amp battery that has LG cells and this battery is removable. So you can take this off of your bike, take it inside and charge it there, or you can charge it on the bike if you want to. Now, one thing that's really nice is it does have that large 20 amp battery and they did supply a three amp charger. So this is gonna take probably about seven hours to fully charge the battery instead of 10 hours if they were to only offer you a two amp charger. Now this does come with a very nice large headlight so you can go out on those night rides and not have to worry about being stranded in the dark. And in the back, you will get a single tail light on the drive side. You can just turn that on with the headlight and it'll also activate whenever you squeeze the brake levers. Now this 20 inch wheeled bike comes equipped with a 750 watt nominal power motor that peaks out at 1400 watts. This motor should have no problem conquering those hills. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time to do the ultimate hill test. This is a 19% grade. This is where I test all of these style of e-bikes on to see how well they'll climb this hill. I think this bike's gonna do really well, so let's not waste any more time. Let's put this in pedal assist five and get pedaling up this hill to see how well it does. All right, let's get going, get a little bit of throttle to get us going, start pedaling. Put it in a little bit easier gear so we can get going here. And then we're gonna just cruise up this hill here real quick. It gets to about five to 7%. This is probably closer to 12%. We are cruising. I am having to put a little bit of effort in so this may not be the best hill climber, but I think it's gonna get us up this hill just fine. Now, since this bike has such a beefy frame, it does weigh a little bit more than say a normal bike of this style. And also the dual suspension on the back adds a little bit of weight too. But I'm cruising up this, this is already gone up the 19% part and I'm staying around 11 miles an hour. So really it actually is doing a really good job didn't have any trouble getting up that hill at all you're also going to be equipped with a pretty standard drivetrain this is the shimano tourney tz rear derailleur and then also up top you're going to get a shimano seven speed shifter and it's going to have a massive 52 tooth chain ring up front to help prevent ghost pedaling at higher speeds now one thing that i really like is how they've integrated the controller in here 
They've got it plated on the bottom here with an aluminum plate, so you don't have to worry about anything coming up and damaging it from the bottom. But also they put this nice plastic cover over it, so it makes the bike look extra clean. Now, not only is the frame design unique, the suspension design is very unique. This has dual air suspension. These are both rated at 800 pounds. At 190 pounds, I can only get this to move just a little bit. I think this suspension is gonna be ideal for somebody who is in the 200 plus pound range, where right around 190 pounds, it wasn't moving as much as I would like, but having four inch wide tires allows me to make the ride a little bit softer, even if I'm not moving the suspension here that much. Now this does come with some unique brakes called DY Island. I've never heard of this brand, but I do really like the way that they feel. These are hydraulic and they do have 180 millimeter rotors, both front and back. And I felt like they stopped me really, really well. Not only that, these do have some reach adjustment dials on them, which is something you don't see on most budget friendly bikes. You do get a pretty comfortable set of ergonomic grips that are lock on on one side. And on the left hand side, you're going to find all of your controls to be able to change through all of your different pedal assist, turn on your headlight or turn the unit on or off. Now the computer screen is massive. You're not going to have any problems seeing your speed or your pedal assist level. I do wish that with the real estate that this computer screen actually takes up, that you got a little bit more information on it than what's actually supplied but I'll take a bigger screen over a smaller screen any day. But I do like the fact that it is a large screen and it's really easy to see all the numbers that are displayed. Now, as for front suspension on this, it is a pretty basic hydraulic front suspension. It'll do a pretty decent job of absorbing the bumps going down the road. Now, one of my favorite things on this bike is the tires. I really love these 20 inch by four inch wide tires. The tread pattern on this is perfect for street riding. These are more of a moped style tire and I think it suits this bike really well. Now up front where the Fouquier logo is, it's actually a mount for a basket. So if you wanna pick up a front basket, you'll have the ability to just mount it right up to the frame. So now that we know a little bit more about the Fouquier Scorpio, let's go ahead and take it outside and see how this thing performs in the real world. All right, here we go. Let's take this bad boy out and see what it can actually do. Since this thing has 20 inch wheels and it's got pretty compact frame design, this thing is really nimble feeling. Now let's test out these brakes and see how they do. Oh yeah, these bad boys are nice. Now one of the things that I like about these brakes is that they actually have lever adjustments on them where you don't see that very much in this price point. Now I'm liking these tires quite a bit. These are a little bit more moped style tires, which to me gives it a little bit better feel on the road than say an off-road tire would. I'm also a big fan of these BMX style bars. I know they're not for everybody, but they give you a little bit different adjustment than the standard bar. And they're just kind of a fun design. They allow the bike to be built, the frame to be built a little bit lower and allow you to be able to kind of adjust them forwards and back a little bit more. Now, I was a little bit worried that the frame would be a little bit wide because this has a very, very wide frame and I was worried that that would affect my pedaling. But honestly, I haven't noticed it at all as I've been out here kind of scooting around. It's not gotten in the way. What's really cool about this is that it does protect the battery. So if you were to ever get into an accident or something was to bump up against your bike, you won't have to worry about your battery actually getting damaged. All right, right up here is where we're gonna do our bridge test. We're gonna see how this bad boy performs going over this bumps on the bridge the dual suspension in the back and uh, suspension up front. Here we go. Oh, smooth. And another brake test. Stops really, really well. All right, now we're gonna do one of my favorite tests and that is the coasting test. We're gonna coast down this hill, get up to about 18 to 20 miles an hour. Then we're gonna let off all the throttle and just coast down the hill to see how quick this bike will register. Here we go. Starting out around 20, we're already up to 30 miles an hour. Cruising. These, oh, there's 40, 41, 42, 43. That seems really fast. This bike is really stable, 44. Wow. 
So now let's talk about the things that I love about this bike and the things that I think could be a little bit better on this bike. One thing that I really do love about this bike is the unique frame design. I don't think there's any other brand doing a frame design like this. It protects the battery and it gives it a really cool look. And to go along with the looks of it, I really like it whenever it doesn't have the fender or the rear rack on the back. I think it looks really sporty this way. It may not be functional for everybody, especially if you're gonna be doing some commuting where you may be riding in the rain, you may want those fenders on there. Or if you're gonna be using this as a cargo bike, you're definitely gonna want that rear rack on there. But if you're not, I think the fenderless, rackless look looks absolutely awesome. And for the third thing that I absolutely love about this bike is the power output. This thing has 750 watt motor that peaks out at 1400 watts. And being able to get up to 30 miles an hour with pedal assist is really nice, especially if you're gonna be using this from getting to point A to point B and you wanna get there really quick and to be able to keep up with traffic, having that bigger motor really does make a difference. So for the first thing that I'm not a huge fan of on this bike is the overall weight. Having this unique frame really does add to the weight. And also the dual suspension on the back doesn't help with it at all. But if you're not one of those people that has to take their bike up a flight of stairs to get it into their house, I think with the frame design, it's worth the weight disadvantage. Now, the other thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the non-adjustability on the rear shocks. Having two shocks that are at 800 pounds of capacity really make the suspension not as usable for most people. Now, lastly, the thing that I'm not a huge fan of on this bike is the fact that the throttle will only go up to 20 miles an hour. I know that that's a standard class three kind of thing, but a lot of bikes that I've reviewed lately have allowed you to get upwards of 28 miles an hour. Now you may be able to go into the menu system and modify that to be able to do that. But with this particular bike straight out of the box, you get to break the rules a little bit on the top speed where I was hitting 30 and 31 miles an hour with pedal assist. But when it comes to throttle, it maxes out at 20 miles an hour. So there you go, guys. That's the Scorpio by Fucare. And I think this is a really cool bike. At the sell price right now of $1,100, this bike offers a lot for that price point. And if you guys wanna pick one up, I would appreciate it if you use my links down below. All right, guys, get out and ride your bike and we'll see you in the next one.